someone that is all across realestate.com.au and she is the managing editor of the lifestyle section there. Today, Chloe's going to take us through all things the market insights, whilst Chloe has, um, she'll be the first to claim she's not the chief economist at realestate.com.au, but she has the proof points to back it up. So um, we're going to chat through all things market insights, but then we're going to talk about how we're going to add value to your home. Over to you, Chloe. Thanks, Kelly. So yeah, we're all here to chat about bathrooms and the good news is that we're not alone. So the stats from our site show that many Australians love a good bathroom tale. And in my role, I'm really close to just how much they're keen to know more and more about bathrooms. So across our lifestyle content experience, we cover all sorts of things, beautiful architecturally designed dream homes, gorgeous renovation with the lovely three birds here as well, infinity pools, all of these beautiful things. But what piece of content trumps all of them. Actually, the story that people have viewed the most on our site is called How to Clean Your Bathroom Grout. <laughs> so clearly as a nation, we're not fans of dirty bathroom grout, <laughs> but we are a nation of property lovers. And this passion really extends into renovating and into DIY. And through Lifestyle, we also know just how much people are really keen to get advice on how to nail their bathroom reno, which I'm sure you're all keen to know more about too, how to create a really stylish but functional space, mm -hmm. and also importantly, how to add value to their home. So let's chat about property value in bathrooms. If you're renovating, the bathroom is really a good place to start because most buyers are going to be looking for a property that has a newly updated or at least a modern bathroom. The exception there being if they're specifically looking for a property that they want to flip, but otherwise it's all about that fresh bathroom. So really consider looking after your bathroom first and foremost, as it's going to give you more bang for your buck if you are intending on selling the property. But just be really careful that you don't overinvest or overcapitalise. At realestate.com.au, we draw on a range of insights and research. So both the what, which comes from our quantitative research, things like online surveys, and also looking at the way that people engage with our content, and also the why, which comes from our qualitative research, which is things like focus groups, which is really useful for uncovering the mindsets of Australians. And this is where we get some of the really juicy info from. We also have our chief economist, as Kelly mentioned, Nera de Connersby, and a team of data scientists. So they draw on a range of market trends, consumer behaviour and research that we then use to inform our editorial content strategy. So on realestate.com.au itself, the most searched type of property is a four bedroom, two bathroom home. So this shows that there's a clear demand for both buyers and renters for a house with multiple bathrooms. So if you are renovating, consider could you add an extra bathroom or at least could you add a powder room? Our research has also shown us that the bathroom is one of the top three areas of the home that property improvers choose to renovate. And the reasons that are driving these renovations are for maintenance, so that's your, your fresh bathroom, style, and of course, a value add. And the amount of money that people are spending on their home improvements, well, across Australia, it's sitting at about $9,800. And perhaps not surprisingly, that skyrockets when you get to New South Wales to over $15,000. Oh so when you consider the yeah. property prices in Sydney, mm -hmm. people are going to have a bit more money to spend on those renovations. So. And that's yeah. per year? Yeah, so. per year. Wow. That's incredible. And then just looking at the market. So there are lots of factors that can drive people to renovate. And one of those things is stamp duty. So especially in Sydney at the moment, there are lots of suburbs where your stamp duty bill is going to be in excess of $100,000. So when you think about that amount of cash, you could add a very nice bathroom for that money, or even a kitchen as well for that matter. So a lot of people will look to renovate and put that money into their own home instead of buying something and spending the money on stamp duty. But on the flip side, when property prices go down, as I'm sure you all know have been across the country, that can also drive people to renovate because they have a fear, whether that's just a perceived fear or a real fear, that their property is going to lose value when they go to market. So again, this can encourage people to renovate instead of selling. And all of this gives us a bit of context into the fact that A, we love to renovate, and B, bathrooms are a key factor in a property buyer's decision-making process. So they're really important. So if you are renovating, there are two sort of key ways to approach your renovation. And that really depends on whether you're renovating to stay or if you're renovating to sell. 
So is it your forever home, your dream home that you intend to live in for years mm -hmm. to come? Or is this an investment property that you're thinking of renting out or that you're going to sell in a few years' time? And no matter what the end goal is, particularly with a bathroom reno, more so even than lots of other areas in the house, you really need to plan, plan, plan and do your research. Because if things go wrong, it can be really expensive to fix it up after the fact, and that's due to things like your tiling and your waterproofing, so you want to avoid that if at all possible. So, renovating for your forever home or your dream home. So this is the property that you want to be in for years and years down the track. <laughs> or potentially even, you know, passed down through your family. And here it's really all about you. It's all about what you want mm -hmm. and what's going to suit your lifestyle. So just take the time to plan and get it right. Look at your current bathroom configuration. Maybe it's a bit of a mess. Maybe it's not working for you. Think about what's going to suit you. You can generally afford to play with a bit of a bigger budget here as well, within reason, because this is your investment bathroom for yourself. So you're going to have to live with these decisions. So spend the time and save the money to get it right. You can also really afford to embrace trends here as well. So if you want that sort of green feature wall or the beautiful pink or apricot herringbone tiles, go for it. Really think about selecting those bold and unique features that speak to your own personal style and aesthetic. So again, splash out on the statement coloured taps if you want. It's all about what's going to make you happy in the long run. But the game completely changes if you're looking to renovate to sell. Obviously, your budget's important no matter what sort of renovation you're doing, but here it's extra important. You really, really don't want to overcapitalise. Also, expect the unexpected. So things can and will go wrong, and that goes mm. for your forever home as well. But just be mindful of this. So build in a bit of a contingency fund if you can. Many experts, I'm sure the birds will tell you as well that things will happen that you just didn't expect. So if you've got some extra cash up your sleeve, it's going to be really useful. Also, a lot of the investors and property experts that we speak to recommend that when it comes to how much money to spend on your bathroom renovation, look at about 10% of the overall property value. So that's for the main bathroom in your house. If it's a powder room or a secondary bathroom, it's about 5% of the overall home's value. And I think that that's really important in terms of um, when we think about overcapitalizing in the bathroom space in terms of you don't actually, if you are, if, you're, if you are renovating to sell, you don't necessarily need to put the most high and opulent um, products into the bathroom, but you actually can work with a, a more um, midstream offering, especially when you're thinking about it from a quality perspective. I think that that's, that's something that's really important and also based on suburb. If, if a suburb, if I know I'm from Victoria where, where I live, um, I probably wouldn't be putting the most opulent um, of bathroom brands in there to sell because the, the, buyer, the buyer who's looking at the, my house probably isn't looking for that. They'll be looking for something further down the road maybe. Yeah, I think that's a really good point and it's about finding that kind of sweet middle ground where you're not blowing the budget and splashing out on all these opulent finishings but at the same time you don't want to cut corners and compromise on quality. So there are a couple of key ways that you can do that and that's really knowing where to DIY and also where to spend and where to save. So a lot of the experts that we work with, they suggest that in the bathroom there are certain things you can do yourself like painting but then you really need to know where you can call on the professionals. So, for example, a licensed plumber and electrician, that's an absolute must. <laughs> you don't want to mess with that. Yeah, that kind <laughs> also, of... Also, there are legal issues. <laughs> Certainly, and someone's got to sign off at it, yeah. on it to ensure it. Just and goes without saying, doesn't it? It does, mm -hmm. yeah. And then where to spend and where to save. So there are some areas of the bathroom where you can save, like on your tiling, and also with lighting. There are some awesome budget-free options out there, like um, strip LED lighting, for example, is a lot more budget-friendly and looks really cool as well. Certainly. Yeah. Mm. So those are key considerations. The other thing to think about is, is it going to be easy to clean? So as I mentioned before, the very popular how to clean your bathroom grout mm. is also closely followed by a story called How to Clean Your Drains in Less Than 10 Minutes. <laughs> so neither of these are particularly sexy subjects, but it really does show that there's a clear hunger with our audience for content that's going to really help them more effectively yeah. and efficiently clean their bathrooms. It's striving towards like functionality in the bathroom space, and I think that it's it, it means by freeing up time, making it products easy to clean, it just makes you allows you to go and live your life. Um, I, I know there's a real kind of war on grout in my house at, because I detest cleaning a bathroom. Um, and I think that that suggestion of those 
bigger tiles from, from a renovation to sale perspective is, is such a great option. Yeah, I think large scale tiling's a really smart idea. Um, obviously because there's less grout lines, which means less cleaning, but also it's a bigger surface area, so it's gonna be a lot easier to wipe down. So that's particularly good if you've got a family where you're gonna have a lot of thrills and spills potentially in the bathroom space. And one of the experts that we work with, Shannon Voss, who you might remember as one half of the Voss Brothers duo from the block, he also suggests looking at using a light grey grout instead of the white on white, because that's also just a lot easier to keep clean. Mm. And I guess similarly, just thinking about Netflix at the moment and the popularity of Marie Kondo in tidying up. I mean, her name is everywhere. I know any time we run a story that mentions Marie Kondo, it's extremely popular, <laughs> which I think kind of just speaks to the real popularity at the moment of living a more minimalist lifestyle. People really want to know how they can declutter their lives and simplify things. And certainly, it's, I, I feel like the Marie Kondo um, philosophy is so applicable into the bathroom space in terms of how do you just ensure that you have a really streamlined process in the morning and evening. And it's really about storage and being able to kind of hide the things that you only get to every couple of months um, and having those, thing, having those everyday items readily accessible. Yeah, and storage, if you're looking to sell, storage is an amazing value add. So think about a wool hung vanity, for example. Float the vanity, you're getting a double whammy there. You're getting storage and you're creating space all at the same time. So that's a really smart idea. And also, if you want to create the illusion of space, just think about how you can use your mirrors because mirrors actually amplify light as opposed to a traditional wall, which is just going to absorb it. So if you position the mirror actually opposite a window, you're going to okay. double the natural light in your bathroom. That's great insight. Awesome. And finally, just really, oh, sounds obvious. Think about your buyers first. And yes. who's your market? Makes perfect sense. But I have a bit of a question for you. Yes. What is your dream bathroom? Because I feel like we've talked about renovating to sell, renovating um, for your forever home, but what would you have in your bathroom? Good wow, that's a great question. And so funny you asked that. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Here's something I prepared earlier. <laughs> So for me, I'm sure a lot of you can relate, I have a very tiny bathroom, it's very Sydney, very small space, and what this means is that there is a daily battle between myself and my husband, we were quite literally elbowing each other out of the way, in a war for the sink and the mirror. And he also spends a lot more time on his hair than I do, <laughs> so this is a real issue for us. So my dream bathroom, it's definitely going to have his and hers vanities Beautiful. and either one big mirror or two mirrors. And I'm just really loving all of the deco inspired curves at the moment. So, so beautiful and just so welcoming design, isn't it? You just yeah. want to kind of be in that space. It is welcoming. As Al said, it's very organic. Mm. <laughs> and I'm definitely not one of those people who likes to clean a bathroom. I don't know that many of us are unless you're a real sort of Monica Geller type. But oh, that's I'm not here. So I'm all about the large scale tiles as well. So mm -hmm. keeping it easy to clean and I'm not going to have that war with the grout. And I guess finally, I just, I really love, I can't go past the combination of marble accents with pink and brushed brass or gold. So mm -hmm. definitely, as Al mentioned as well, the brushed brass is having its kind of time in the sun at the moment, but it's also a classic look. And for me, I know I'm going to really love it for years to come. So just finally few kind of key tips. Maybe just think about it before you go making a really bold statement a la the block and <laughs> popping in a freestanding gold bath or any metallic for that matter. <laughs> so that's whether or not it's your house or you're going to sell it, but just think about that one. The old gold, bla gold bath just strikes again, doesn't it? It's, <laughs> it really, it's something that is, it's such a personal decision and it really goes right back into the, the older forever home if it's your style. And hey, if you, you know, you're going to love it for the next 20 years, then go for it. But hey, well. maybe not the best decision if you're looking to sell. <laughs> Just remember that a property ultimately that appeals to more buyers is going to create more competition in the market. So if you're renovating to sell, really think about keeping it neutral. Avoid those polarising trends or features. So think about it before you go adding the feature wall or the feature tiles and just try and keep it really simple. Planning is crucial, as I mentioned, and of course your budget, really try and stick to it. But at the end of the day, throughout the renovation process, you just want to have fun with it, really enjoy yourself, use it as a chance to be creative, and no matter whether you're staying or going, you know you're going to create something that you can be really proud of. Totally. Thank you. <laughs>